The Mendenhall Glacier is really dangerous. People can be walking across the snow. They step and they're gone. People die doing this stuff all over the world. The ice gave out and then I free fell at 30 feet. At that point, I was absolutely terrified and worried for his life. It was a panic situation all the way around. All I could think was I was going to land in water. And at that temperature, you don't have five minutes and you're done. Alaska is remote. There's oceans really close to the mountains, ice fields, there's glaciers. All these things, I think, make up what Alaska is. It's the last frontier. Some of the most beautiful things, you go under glaciers and you see this translucent blue color. The lights filtered out every other color except for this deep blue. And there's nothing else in the world like it. I really enjoy ice climbing. Because we have these glaciers up here, it's something that you can always go and do. It is a very dangerous thing. But when you're climbing and you put your ice tool in, it can just splinter and shatter off in big pieces. These big chunks of ice will just come off and then it can hit you in the face. People die doing this stuff all over the world. It's a very risky business climbing on glaciers. When the first explorers came to Alaska, the native peoples warned the explorers about them. They said there are a few routes that we know across the glaciers and those are safe, but otherwise don't go on them. Holy crap. One day I just got a call from Alan. He said, hey, you know, let's go do some climbing and camp. We're like best friends growing up as kids. Went skiing together, went to school together, went rollerblading together. I consider Colin like a brother. So I remember we went out, went towards the glacier, and started hiking around. It was clear, not a cloud in the sky, beautiful day. Just so peaceful up there, there's, you know, nobody around. We're talking and joking around, and it happened super quick. The ice gave out under my feet. The tip of the bridge just broke, and then free fell a good 30 feet. All I could think was I was going to land in water, and at that temperature, you don't have five minutes, and you're done. There are entire rivers rushing under the ice. If someone fell into an underground river, they would die of hypothermia very quickly. My first daughter had just been born. I just thought, wow, this is it. I'm not going to ever see her again. I felt like I was letting everybody down. Right at that moment, my feet flopped down and land on a snow bridge. I was in just total shock. My adrenaline was off the charts. So I immediately yell out to him to see if he's okay. Colin! I started hearing Alan yelling my name. I was so in a daze that I didn't, I couldn't even respond. We were out there free climbing around, so I didn't have any ropes or rescue gear. So at this point, I'm in a panic. I needed to figure out how to get him out. The quickest thing was to call his brother, because he lived out pretty close to the lake. I remember that day I got off work, was sitting down to eat dinner, and the phone rang, and Alan was on the other end, and right away just said, Sean, Colin fell in a crevasse. Can you get out here quick? And I was definitely speeding whole way there. It was really technical terrain where we were at. So I was like, well, I need to meet you. And knowing that Alan was up there was very comforting. So when he left, it was pretty creepy. I'm down in this, you know, ice all around me and it's just, just a reverberating, just boom, just not only could I hear it, but I could feel it. That's, that's the sound of the glacier as it flows down the mountain, it you know goes around the turn. It's, the glacier is actually cracking apart. The whole crevasse could come apart or close together. There's no telling. 
the ice there is under so much pressure that most of the air gets squeezed out of it. That's why it sometimes cracks. Ice bridges can be there one day, and then they can be gone the next. I took off, and I'm terrified of running across icebergs. It's just sketchy business out there. But at this point, it didn't matter. We were gonna get to each other and go get his brother. So we're full speed, running in crampons, and we meet each other. Within hitting the toe of the glacier, another 10 or 15 minutes, and we were at the hole we're calling fell in. It's kind of a weird off angle going into the crevasse. So I set up the anchor so I could get down to the edge of the crevasse and look in and see Colin. First thing I asked him is if he could hook a rope to his harness, and he's like, no way. I think it was a combination of being in such a tight spot and having a hand that had no feeling in it. As a last resort, you know, he tied a loop in the, the line and lowered it down to me, and I put it, you know, under my arms in my shoulders, which is, you know, it's not ideal, but that's what we had to do. My little brother was stuck in the bottom of the crevasse, and it's time to not go by the book. The first thing I, remember, I know that I felt was that the speed at which he was pulling me out. You know, I know he wanted me out of there. He's my older brother. We were just focused on getting him up, getting him to safety, and having him back. Pulls me up, he anchors me to, the, to his, his anchor, and then he just gives me a big, big old bear hug. <laughs> Big hug. I couldn't have been happier and more relieved that uh, that whole accident was over and we were fortunate enough to have a, a good outcome. I went from thinking I was dead to knowing I was rescued. It hasn't dampened my enthusiasm for getting out in the ice. The older I get and the more I go out there and do it, the more I want to be there. I know the risks, I know the dangers, and the possibility of falling is out there, something bad happening, but the reward of being out in the mountains and doing these things is much greater than not being out there at all. It did make me realize that I'm not invincible. Since then, I don't do nearly as many crazy things as I used to. When I was thinking about my daughter, I just realized that she was the most important thing to me. I wouldn't want her to be without a dad. I didn't think I was going to see her again. And then I saw her, and uh, it was the biggest relief of my life. <laughs> mm -hmm.